Hey everyone, this is Nancy. I'm the owner at Sipping and Painting in Hamden in Denver. We're located at I-25 in Hamden. And right now we're closed for COVID-19, unfortunately, but I'm going to show you how to create a beautiful painting and you can go ahead and do this class at home. All right, so here we go. We have our canvas. Let me just adjust that a tiny bit. We have our canvas. It's a 16 by 20 canvas. And then next to it, we have the painting we're gonna be doing. This is a really easy painting called Mystic Moon. It's kind of fun. Uh, adults or kids can do this, no problem. We're gonna be using acrylic paints today uh, at our studio. Uh, we usually do acrylic paints. We also teach some watercolor classes and Bob Ross classes. We're the only Colorado paint and sip that I know of that has Bob Ross classes as well, and those are oil painting classes. But today we're gonna to be doing this easy and fun acrylic painting called Mystic Moon. Uh, let's see, so we have several brushes here. I have a large, whoops, a large, and <laughs> I dropped that one in paint, silly me. Okay, I have a large, I have a baby, I have a medium one, and I have a fan brush. Uh, so I'm gonna set those down here. You can use whatever paint brushes you have laying around. Also, you can use whatever colors you uh, have laying around. The great thing about landscapes is that as long as you're close to the colors, it doesn't really matter. So right here, we have a phthalo blue. You can use any blue. We have a phthalo green, again, any green. Black, white, a little harder to see the white. Um, this is a primary blue, uh, also a fluorescent blue will work. Basically, I just have two different colors of blue. So as long as you have two different colors of blue, that's all we need. We also have a fluorescent pink. So if you have colors that look something like this, your painting will look something like mine. If not, experiment. It's okay if you just have a purple and an orange, go ahead, wing it. The important thing is when you paint that you have fun, you get some experience painting and you relax because painting is a very re relaxing activity and it's great for stress, to lower your stress. So we have our paints, we have our brushes, we have our 16 by 20 canvas, you can use any size canvas. I also have a stack of napkins here and I have my water jar. And it's just water, I've got a little baby brush in there, detail brush, I'll take that out. <clears throat> in between painting, I'm gonna put my brushes in the water and keep them there and then I'm gonna dab them on these napkins before I reach into the next color. Acrylic paint hardens and dries in about five minutes. So you wanna be real quick. The drier your climate, the drier, the faster it dries. You wanna be real quick with acrylic paint. All right, so the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to go into my water. I am in Denver, it's very dry here. Paint dries very quickly in Denver. So I am going to cover my canvas with a little bit of water. All right, great. A little bit of water on um, the whole thing. And that's just going to keep it moist so that things can move around easily. Now normally what we do when we're painting with acrylic paints is we paint, uh, when we're doing a landscape that is, we paint the background first. This background, as you can see, is much more complicated than most, but it, and it will also take me most of the time for the painting. It's also really fun. So I'm gonna go ahead, and even though you can't really see this, I'm gonna take my big brush, I put some white paint on it, and I'm gonna spin in a circle. And I'm just gonna show you, that's gonna create this moon over here. But I just wanna show you first when you're creating a circle, it's hard to just do a circle freehand. Nobody can really do that easily. But if you go in the center of where you want your circle and then slowly circle out, just slowly and careful circle, circle out. You can't see this because it's white on white, but you'll get a circle and you just keep going farther out, farther out, farther out. I'm never lifting my brush off the canvas so that's a great technique for making a circle when you don't have a template for a circle. 
Now, if you don't like this method, you could always use a jar lid or a glass or whatever you want to make a circle. I just put in a circle so that I know where my, uh, my moon is going to start. Now, this moon has a touch of pink in it. So I took the tiniest amount of pink on my brush. You can see how tiny that is. And I'm just going to go around that circle I already did just so that I can start to sketch in where my moon will be. The other thing I want to tell you is no two paintings look alike. And so whatever I come up with, it's going to be close to the original, but it will never look exactly like the original. And that's okay. Every painting shows your personality. And so two artists will have two totally different paintings. And that's a great thing. So embrace that. All right, I'm gonna put this up just a little bit higher. All right, so I'm gonna put my brush in the water now and I'm going to start to build up the colors. And one thing that's really interesting about this particular painting is that the colors kind of blend with each other. So I might not wash my brush as much as I normally would because these colors will start to blend as I do that. Let me show you what I mean. Okay, so first I'm going to dip this brush in my fluorescent blue. I'm going to go around the pink and I'm just going to make a little circle around the pink and I'm not worried about how neat it is. Not at all. While my brush is still dirty, I'm going to pick up a little bit of my white paint with just the corner. I don't want to go right into the center of the white because I don't want to make my white all dirty. But I'm just going to overlap this blue a bit with that white because I don't want hard lines. I want things to blend together. I'm also going to do the same thing on the inside of that blue line where it touches the pink. I want these messy circles. The original is a very loose painting and I want to keep it loose. And what I mean by that is I don't want it to be too fussy. Perfection is the enemy of art. I teach Bob Ross classes here at the studio, and I'm always telling my Bob Ross customer, pardon me, my Bob Ross students, that um, uh, the train left the station. What was I going to say? Um, yeah, basically, you know, enjoy your art. Bob used to teach that every day is a great day when you paint, and we just want to enjoy the process of painting and not worry. And sometimes we make accidents, which Bob called happy accidents, and sometimes we do our best work that way. So just relax, enjoy the experience. And know that as you do this, that um, it will look different. Everyone's will look a little bit different. One second. Okay. I'm also going to touch my uh, brush into a little bit of that fluorescent blue, and I'm going to go around that as well. Now I'm looking at this original, and at some point these swirls start to go off. So I'm going to go back into my fluorescent blue. Again, you didn't have to do the orders that I did. I did the phthalo blue, I did the fluorescent blue, whatever your blues are. I just kind of alternated them, put in a little white. But I want this color now to go off and up and start to create this wind because this wind is what makes this painting fun. So I keep going into that lighter shade of blue that I have, whatever that is for you. Hopefully you have two shades of blue or two shades of something. All right, and I'm pulling that up. I'm also gonna next, I haven't cleaned my brush. I'm gonna go into that darker blue and I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm going to go around, I'm overlapping the whole time, overlapping with the last color, and I'm going around and then up, because I'm creating this, starting over there, I'm creating this uh, wind, and the wind is just going to go right off the page. Now, it's running out of paint over on that side, so I can come in the opposite direction. Just be careful when you go around the curve that you're still keeping the curve. And again, fluorescent blue is a little thin on that side, so I'll go around like that. 
again, notice how I'm not real fussy about this. Next, I'm gonna pick up a little bit of white because I also want some white liners. And I have not cleaned my brush. I'm letting these colors blend. Oh, I started to tell you that perfection is the enemy of art. It really is. So if you're a perfectionist, art is a great hobby to take up because you will learn real quick that the experience alone is worth it and uh, that mistakes are great to make and it can be fun to make mistakes in life. As I said before, we're closed right now. It's May 8th, I think, and uh, we're closed for the COVID crisis. And hopefully Denver will be able to open up bars and restaurants in June. I'm hoping maybe June 1st. We'll see what the governor says and the mayor say. But it's, uh, it's really nice to just paint at home. So whatever you have, if you don't have these colors of paint. Now I'm going into that fluorescent pink. I'm gonna put a layer of that in. Again, it's not exactly the same as the other one, but that's okay. We're just gonna have fun with this. Um, so whatever you have at home, if you don't have these colors of paints, don't worry about it. You can use chalk, you can use, it's funny, I saw, I saw someone using nail polish once on a video uh, because they didn't have paints and that was kind of fun. Just use whatever you have, crayons, markers, whatever you have. When I taught preschool many years ago, when my kids were little, we used to use uh, vanilla pudding and we'd put food coloring in it and let the kids paint with that, that was fun. So you see, I have some blue swirls, some white swirls, I have the second color of blue swirls, I have some pink swirls. It doesn't really matter because that's what's going on behind this painting. Now, as I get farther away from the sun, uh, or the moon, I'm gonna go back in later and I'm going to make that moon brighter. But I'm gonna start to get darker down below um, because it does look like it's farther from the source of light of the moon, so the colors will start to get darker. I'm using that darker shade of blue now. Boy, it's funny to be in here all by myself at the studio. We've been closed now about seven weeks and I miss our customers so much I can't stand it. I really, really love my job, I love the studio. We used to get about 50 people in here at a time uh, on the busiest nights and boy, we have a great time here. And so for the past seven weeks we've been closed and it's just quiet. Um, been getting a lot of things done that I wasn't able to do before, but. I sure miss all our customers. You know what I'm gonna do? I'm just gonna keep doing this, and then the last layer is I'm gonna put in the green hill. And while I'm doing this, I'm gonna put on some music. How's that? Let's see if I can. Um, and, yeah, so I'm gonna put in the green hill. And then we're gonna let that dry before we come back and put on glitter and trees. So let me see if I can get some music started here. Um, go ahead, take a look at that, and I'll be right back. I just keep painting. Remember I told you I'm going to continue on with what I was doing before. Whoop. No worries. Acrylic paint is so easy to wipe off if you spill. I didn't blot my brush. I had too much water on it.
YouTube video for the studio. Uh, since COVID happened, we've had to take things online and none of us really knew how to do that before. We're really, really good at giving the customers a great in-person experience, uh, but doing something online was, was until now out of my comfort zone. So hopefully this is gonna go well and we'll just keep on doing this. I'm excited. Excited to learn something new. I'm gonna pick up a little bit of white on my dirty brush after that green. And the reason I'm doing that is I wanna mix in some lighter green off to the side here. My, my brush is dirty, so those colors are just gonna meet there. I'll show you why I'm doing that. This original has the streaks of green going over the hill and then eventually blending up with the blue. I grew up in the Detroit area eons ago and so I still like my Motown music so we do play a fair amount of Motown music in between the classes and during the classes in between the more modern stuff. Hope you like it. This particular song is Marvin Gaye. I think it's Marvin Gaye. Let me think for a minute. Yeah, what's going on? It's a good song for right now. Things are crazy. It's a crazy, crazy world right now. It's a good question to ask. What's going on? How can we be kinder to people? All right, so we've got my hill down here where the uh, trees are gonna grow out of. Got my swoops. I'm gonna clean my brush and I'm gonna go back in and fix my sun a little bit. Make it a little rounder. a video I'm gonna make it more like an experience of being in a sipping and painting class exactly I think I'll not talk so much and put on more music start and stop it that's what we do in the class there's a lot of time just listening to music and talking to your friends enjoying a glass of good wine oh boy even as an owner of a paint and sip, I just love paint and sip so much. When I have free time, I go to other people's paint and sips because I love to have a glass of wine and just paint and relax and listen to music. The reason I bought the studio is my husband actually, uh, when they were selling this one, when the previous owner was selling, he joked and said, you know, you might as well just buy it because you're there so much. Either that one or the other one. I went, you know, that's a great idea. Talked him into it. So right now, all of this is drying. You can see that it's still pretty wet. Now, my blues are not exactly the same as the blues in the original. Who cares? Yours won't be either. Paints fade. Actually, if you'll... You'll take a look at this. This is gold dust. Gold dust. This dust is actually glitter. And we will apply glitter, so we'll have that. We'll also put in some black lines. In fact, why don't I put in a couple of black lines now? Might as well. That moon is outlined with black. A little bit of black lines. All right. Make sure nothing is going to drip here. I do it. Okay. All right, I'm using my small brush. I'm going to pick up very carefully a little bit of black. And I'm going to very slowly and carefully put in a black circle.
blue in there. I've got some white on there. And what I want is just a lighter blue, so I'm just going to tap my fan brush right on there. Pick up a little bit of that blue and the white on there. Can you see it? It's just going to give me something slightly lighter. In fact, I can go in and get a little bit more blue on it. It's kind of a lazy way to mix. What I'm going for is kind of this marbly light blue. That's what I'm going for. See that? Okay. I want to just lighten some of this up a bit, but I have to be real careful because I've already put in some black and that could be dangerous to uh, go over that too much. I'm going to stay away from the black, but I'm just going to come back in and put in a little bit more of that light blue delicately with my fan. Now, if you don't have a fan brush, and you probably don't at home, I'm a thing that art schools have laying around, but not the average person does. You can always just take a small brush. Just make sure you don't touch any of that black. All right. All right, I put, successfully put a little more light in my painting, and that's what I was going for. A little bit more light. And fan brushes are so fun to do that. All right. I'm happier. Are you? I hope so. I hope you're happy. I hope if you're watching this, it means you want to relax and watch someone paint, or you're, better yet, that you're painting yourself right along with me. All right, I'm going to let this dry a little bit more, and then I'm going to go in and I'm going to put in these three trees. You can't really see three. Now you can, three trees. And then last, after that dries, I'm going to put in the glitter. And the, uh, this glitter is mixed with paint, so I'll have to do that. All right, so I'm going to turn it off. And um, do I have to turn it off? You know what? I'm not even going to turn it off. Woohoo! I'm going to live dangerously. Watch this, folks. I am not going to let it dry. I'm just going to make sure I don't have any big clumps of paint. I'm also going to turn down the music a bit, even though I love it. Silly, fun Motown sound. All right. When my, young, when my staff is here, they're younger than I am, and they play more modern music, but I do love my Motown. All right, so I'm going to go right ahead in, and I'm going to go ahead and do my trees. Now, let me teach you about trees. This is important. So I'm going to turn down the music so I can tell you things. All right. When you're painting trees, you always want to make sure the base of your tree is wider than the top of your tree. Uh, Bob Ross used to say that trees need foots. And what he meant by that is they need to be able to stand. If you have your tree wider at the top, it will tip over. So you want your trunks to be wider at the bottom than they are at the top. And to do that, always start with paint on your brush, start at the bottom and go up. As you go up, you're leaving paint and it will make what you are painting thinner strokes as you go up and run out of paint. So always start at the bottom on a tree so it's wider. Then next, branches should always be thinner than the trunks themselves. And you'll see that on the branches, it's thicker at the ba base of the branch where it touches the trunk than it is farther out. It's kind of like your arm and a shoulder. So from your trunk, make sure that the branch has a little bit of a shoulder there, a little thicker area, and then it gets thinner as you go out. That's what will make a more realistic tree. Another tip for painting great trees, and like I said, I'm a Bob Ross teacher here, so right now we're not doing a Bob Ross painting. But the tips that you learn in those Bob Ross classes, you can translate uh, into painting of all kinds. Just wonderful. I hope, hope someday you guys, uh, whoever's watching, will come in and paint with me, Bob Ross, because you'll learn so much. But anyway, back to acrylic painting. Uh, so what I'm going to do, so, okay, back to the uh, couple more trip, tips about acrylic painting. Notice that these trunks don't come out at exactly the same place. It's not just a Y. So you have, or you have a trunk and then you have branches. What I mean is the branches don't come out exactly the same place. The reason for that is that when trees grow, 
the trunk shoots up and then one branch at a time will uh, grow out of one side and meanwhile the trunk keeps growing. So you don't tend to have, in most species, you don't have two branches coming out exactly the same place. It's usually one, tree grows a little bit more, then another one, tree grows a little bit more, then another one. And again, always make sure that any branch that comes off of a branch, uh, so we have trunk, we have branch, we have um, twigs maybe, but each, as you go out from the trunk into smaller branches or twigs, each one's gonna get smaller and finer, thinner. So just remember those tips and you'll make a great tree. Okay, there you go. Uh, these bottoms are kind of funky. This is a very stylized painting. So these bottoms are unique and interesting. And so we'll just, uh, we'll give this a shot. Okay. All right, so I've got my water jar, I'm gonna move that out of the way. And I've got my canvas, all right. So I'm gonna start over here, and this tree, remember I always start at the bottom and then I go up, and as I'm going, I'm lifting up, lighter pressure, lighter pressure. And you know what's great? My brush is picking up those other colors as I go up, and that's creating an interesting trunk and bark. Notice how as I go up, the branches get thinner, and then also notice I always start at the bottom and come out of this bottom area. And then when you're painting a tree, always start at the bottom, come out. Remember, go up through the trunk and sometimes wiggle those branches and cross them over others. Because trees are not perfectly straight. There's nothing perfectly straight in nature. It's wiggly. And if you look at a Bob Ross painting, and he was really so good at landscapes and trees, nature. His trees are not straight. In fact, sometimes he even painted dead trees and it just makes things look so much more natural. So notice how I'm going up through it and wiggle, wiggle, wiggle those branches. Now I can continue like I'm doing with just my medium brush or I can stop there. Uh, and, and start doing smaller branches with my small brush, which I will do. But I also want to show you the bottom, the bottom of this painting. Let me get, okay. So at the bottom of this painting, I'm gonna start in the base of that, and then I'm just gonna come out and paint from the bottom and lift off with my brush. So I'm getting more triangular shaped roots and make them irregular, don't make them all the same, remember? Just like at the top, they, they're not gonna be the same. Make sure wherever the trunk, connected to the trunk, that it's thicker. Those little shoulders I was telling you about. Okay. Now I'm gonna do another tree. I'm gonna put it a little bit higher uh, than the last one. And so I'm gonna start it maybe right here. And I'm gonna go up and lift off. Start at the trunk, go up, lift off. Now, if you run out of paint, that means you're not loading your brush enough. Sometimes I just start thinking about the shape and I don't load my paint enough. Remember, curves, curves, curves. Curvy trees look more natural. If you have a bunch of straight lines, it will not look like nature. All right. So, curves and wiggles. And I'm going to come down here and I'm going to put those trunks... Um, roots. Roots down here. I don't know why sometimes trees have those roots that are above the ground and some trees don't. But in this particular painting, whatever this kind of tree is, they do. All right. And then this one I'm going to put a little higher still. Okay. Oops. Always start at the bottom. Press harder at the bottom and then lighter as you go up. Okay. Press hard at the bottom, lift off, meaning go lighter, touch as you go up. Twist and turn, twist and turn that, that brush. And some of these branches are gonna go right in front of that moon and that's okay, that's what we want. I'm gonna continue on, after I get this trunk, 
this tree on. I'm going to continue on with a small brush and just put some extra branches on there. Um, I'm kind of pressing the limits of this medium brush for getting those fine lines. So notice how these are triangular shaped, um, those roots, because I'm pressing harder at the base and then lifting off. Press harder at the base and lift off, and that will give you those pointier roots, okay? All right, I'm not sure why this tree has so many roots, but it's not my original, so I'm gonna go with it. All right, now I'm gonna leave, uh, I have a lot of paint on there. All right, now I'm going to take a small brush, I'm gonna dip it in this black paint, and then I'm going to pull these little smaller branches off from the larger ones. And notice how I'm wiggling, and turning and wiggling and turning these branches. This is a smaller brush than I used before. And you know what, if, if your brush, the paint breaks, it's okay. Like I said before, no tree is perfect. Nothing in nature is perfect. And it definitely isn't straight, so go with it. These are going to look like kind of creepy Halloween trees, and that's okay. Because, oh, you know what? I forgot to paint up here. Hmm. That happens sometimes. I'm going to drop my brush, and real quick, I'm going to fix that. I love it when I make a happy accident. So then I can show you how to fix it. Here's the accident. Notice I didn't put any paint here or here. That's okay. What I'm going to do is I'm going to clean off my medium brush in the water. I'm going to dab, dab it on there. And then I'm just going to go right over what I have, and, but I'm just going to do it carefully. And I'm going to put in some paint. I'm going to drop in some paint up there. And as Bob Ross said, just drop it in, drop it in. Everything can be fixed. If you have to go over something, you really want to just cover it up completely, use white paint on top of, of your dry mistake. Let the white paint dry and paint over it just like white out. White out meaning that correction fluid. Those of us who are old enough to use typewriters back in the day, we used a lot of that stuff. Since computers became the instrument of choice for writing letters, we don't really need white out anymore, but Hopefully you still know what it is. All right, so notice how I just, I dropped in some color and fix that. Not a big deal, not a big deal. All right, and then same thing over here. I saw a little bit of paint on my brush. I'm just gonna go ahead and put in that corner. There you go. That was not a big deal. See, happy accidents. Now I can go back with my small brush and my black paint and I can go over where those trees were, tips of those trees, no big deal. You can always go over any color with black. No. Going over, well anyway, no worries. Okay, so not bad. Now I'm going to put in those smaller branches on all of my trees. Those smaller branches, keep them moving, keep them moving. Change the shapes of each one. Always start in the trunk and go out. Start in the trunk, go out. What happens if you start in the sky and then come in toward the trunk? Anyone know? Here's a $64,000 question. If you start in the sky and go out with your branches, I mean, rather come in, there will be more paint on the end of your brush, so that's where the paint will be deposited is out in the sky, and you'll have cactuses. So there's a tip. When you are painting a cactus, start out in the sky and come in toward the trunk. But for deciduous trees, start in the trunk, go up and out. And then as you go out, your branches get smaller and smaller. I think I have enough branches. I tend to overdo them, so no surprises there. Now, 
all I need are some dabs for leaves, and then I'm going to let it dry and put glitter on it. So put my medium brush in some black paint, and now I'm just going to put in little pockets of leaves. And even in the shape of branches, when you, there's no branch there, because sometimes branches are so small you can't see them. And if you crisscross your leaves like this, it looks like, I don't know how else to describe it, it's alternating like zippers. It looks like there's a branch there, even if there's not. So uh, let's say here's an example. So crisscross. Notice how I'm spinning my brush, or uh, twisting my brush. It just creates little nice branches like that. Even if you don't have a branch there, it just gives the impression of one. So that's kind of a nice way to make leaves, okay? And, or you can just dab them on. These are light dabs. I'm, I'm going with light dabs or stipples. The technical word is stippling. Going with light stipples because I don't want to push hard. If I push hard, I'm going to get fatter leaves. And I want these to be delicate. I put enough paint on my brush so that I can keep doing this a while on one load, but I'm not pressing hard. I'm pressing lightly so that I'm just depositing my brush. My bristles are bent, bending a little bit as I do it, but not real hard, okay? And I'm just gonna keep doing this. This tree, these trees have a lot of branches. I'm gonna, while I'm doing this, while I'm stippling on more leaves, I wanna tell you a little bit about our business here. So again, we're sipping and painting Hamden. We're at the corner of I-25 and Hamden in Denver. And we teach classes seven days a week. Well, we did before COVID, but now we're gonna be starting up with just a few a week. And as our numbers build, we'll add more classes. But when we were busy, we did them seven days a week. We even did holidays, the only day off we had as a studio was Thanksgiving. Uh, the whole staff took Thanksgiving off, but we taught Christmas, Christmas Eve, New Year's Eve, New Year's Day. Why? Because Denver is a great tourist place and we would have tourists come in on their holiday. We would have people bring in their lots of transplants here from other places. We would have out of town company and people would bring their company here. We had this lovely family one time, and they, the whole family came in from other states. It was a big family, it was really, really beautiful. We uh, also hosted this group that used to meet in Denver. It was a group of college friends, and they all dispersed all over the country. But since Denver is a more centralized area, they would fly in from other states and they would meet right here at Sipping and Painting Hamden, believe it or not. That was interesting. Okay. All right. So I've got lots of leaves there and I tend to overdo leaves, so I'm gonna think I'm gonna just uh, call it a day. All right. So hopefully you can see that these two paintings look pretty similar. Pretty similar. Not exact, but pretty similar. I'm going to let these dry, and then I'm going to put glitter on mine last. So since that's going to take a while to dry, um, I'm going to come back in about 10, 15 minutes and put the glitter on, because you want to apply glitter when it's, uh, well, I use a liquid glitter that we get from Blick, Dick Blick. You brush it on, and then it dries. So I'm going to put on the liquid glitter after my painting is dry. If you have powdered glitter, you can drop it on, you can take your painting off, drop it on wet, the paint, the wet paint. But I'm going to wait until my painting's dry and then I'll put on the glitter. So when you are finished putting on your glitter, your painting will look like this. All right. So I hope you had fun watching me paint and I hope you also painted along with me. Would you like to see a little bit of our studio? Oops, hold on. Still new with this. Let me show you the studio. That's the bar. 
we actually are getting new tables. So it's pretty bare looking in here right now. It looks like a dance studio instead of an art studio. But we're getting new tables. And there's Bob Ross. Hey, Bob. And at the end of our classes, we have our students stand in front of the sipping and painting sign with their paintings and we take a picture of them with Bob Ross. That's pretty fun. So here's the studio. Uh, a couple more weeks, actually later today, we're going to be getting in new tables and we're going to set all those easels up again and hopefully we'll have some uh, socially distant but fun classes starting in here real soon. All right. There you go. So again, I'm Nancy at Sipping and Painting Hamden. I'm not quite sure where to look on a camera yet. I'm Nancy at Sipping and Painting Hamden. And on behalf of me, my friend Bob, and all of us at Sipping and Painting Hamden, it's just a pleasure to have you join me today in painting. Please come back and paint with me again soon. Cheers.